in A level if the plotted graph is too small or if the scale of the graph is odd you will be penalized in your examination many of you would have these frustrations as to what scale should you choose when you are plotting the graph this is the lesson for you to help yourself to make a good decision in the scale you got to know the kind of graph paper you are given in your examination an A-level graph paper typically has a dimension of 8 times 12 big squares. Each big square is 2cm by 2cm. What is a graph of proper size? Well, you must be one that optimizes the use of the graph paper. A good graph is one that should have at least all the plot points occupy more than half of the available plot area. Take for instance, if the graph that you have plotted is only of the size of this white rectangle, then it is of improper size. If the graph that you have plotted is of this size as shown, it is of the correct size. You notice that the horizontal dimension of the plotted graph is more than half the breadth of the graph paper. Similarly for the vertical side too. It is important to know what a proper graph size is. This is because it has an impact on the choice of scale. A good scale is one that produces a graph of proper size. Okay, let's start working on some examples. If I'm given this table of values of time versus distance, what should I do in order to compute the proper scale for these values? Well, the first thing that you've got to do is to compute the range of values for time as well as the range of values for distance. To compute the range of values of time, you use the biggest value, which is 4.61, to take away the smallest value, 0 0.802, Then you get a value of approximately 3.8. Well, you have to round it off to the bigger value so that all the plot points for time will go into the graph. And I round it off, it will be about 4. I do the same things for the range of distance. The biggest value is 2.0 minus the smallest 0.3 and I get an approximate value of 1.7 which if I were to round it off is going to be 2. If I were to use 8 big squares to plot the range of time, how much is 1 big square? Well, that's easily computed. 4 divided by 8 is going to give me 0 0.5 second for each big square. If I were to use 10 big squares to plot the range of distance, 1 big square will take 2 divided by 10, which is 0 0.2 meter. Are these scales good scales? Well, the size of the graph plotted is going to be A by 10. So, this size is definitely more than half the size of the graph paper. As shown here quite clearly, the graph that we intend to plot will cover more than half the size of the graph paper. Some of you may ask, why do I choose to divide the range of uh, time axis of 4 seconds by 8 big squares? Why not divide it by 7 big squares, 6 or even 5? Let's do some checks. If I were to divide 4 seconds by 7 big squares, I'm going to get a value of 0 0.577 something seconds for one big square. 
Well, this is not an easy number to plot. What if I try six big squares? I'm going to get 0 0.66 something second. Not an easy number to plot too. Let's try 5. 4 divided by 5. I'm going to get 0 0.8 seconds for one big square. Quite an easy number to plot. But in comparison to the previous calculation of one big square is equal to 0 0.5 seconds, the graph that I plot using this scale of one big square is equal to 0 0.8 seconds will be smaller. I can use the same argument to decide on the number of big squares that I should use for the distant axis. This is the graph plotted with a scale of 1 big square is equal to 0 0.5 seconds for the time axis, which is indeed of good proper size. It covers more than half of the available graph area. What about the one with a smaller scale? This is the graph plotted with a smaller scale of 1 big square is equal to 0 0.8 seconds. Though the size is comfortably more than half of the graph area, in comparison, the previous one is still better in reducing random error. Let's try another set of values. We will use similar approach in computing the range of log m and log t. In computing the range, we always use the bigger value to subtract the smaller value so that we will always get a positive number. For the range of log t, I will approximate it to 0 0.4. For that of log m, I will approximate it to 0 0.9. We always overestimate so that all the plot points can be included in this range. For the range of values shown, I will allocate 8 big squares for the range of log t so that 1 big square will take 0 0.05. For the range of log m, I can comfortably give it 9 big squares so that each big square will take 0 0.1. Some of you may wonder, why don't I use 10 bit squares for the range of log m? Isn't it a bigger scale? And it will give me a bigger graph? Well, if I were to use 10 bit squares for the range of 0 0.9, then for 1 big square, I'm going to get a value of 0 0.09. That would mean one big square like this will give me a value of 0 0.09. If I were to use this scale of one big square is equal to 0 0.09, it is not going to be very easy for me to indicate a value of 0 0.1 on the graph. Therefore, this scale of one big square is equal to 0 0.09 is an example of odd scale and it should not be used. If I were to use the scales that I have worked out before to plot the graph, I would be able to get a graph the size as shown by this white rectangle, which is really a graph of decent size because it occupies more than half the graph paper. So another graph of proper size is produced using this approach. Do review the lesson again and again in order to understand the approach better.